Can you think of a recent example where you saw a coverage gap on a risk that came through? Absolutely. Um, the one was <laughs> rather frightening uh, not too long ago. The med medical facility in the, the Northeast, um, and we're doing a policy review before um, submitting to markets and doing my due diligence and reading through the uh, general liability form. They had a, an overt total exclusion for uh, vape vaporizer products, accessories, and losses stemming from um, vaping. Crash Center sold vaporizer products and had a total exclusion, which was a big issue that the other agent hadn't picked up. Um, to be honest, my retailer hadn't picked it up either. So it was an opportunity for us to discuss the coverage. Um, we also knew that because this is a medical um, dispensary, they were selling high strength edibles, common for cancer patients and such. Um, they had an exclusion for a certain milligram of product that these guys were selling on a daily basis and nobody had really read the form or asked the right questions. So we were able to take that policy, get them um, better coverage for slight rate reduction, um, plug that gap and um, solve it pretty quickly for them. Here in Michigan, uh, recently I had an account where uh, it was a large uh, vertically integrated facility, um, over 30 million in annual revenues. And uh, you look at their policy and there's an exclusion for product liability on it. And you look and see if they have a standalone, you know, product liability policy elsewhere and you come to find out that all they have is what the state is actually requiring them to have um, for a licensing requirement, which is $100,000 in Michigan in, in product liability coverage. So, you know, for a $30 million um, operation to only have $100,000 in product liability coverage, you know, obviously is a major issue. So um, just making them aware of the fact that, you know, the high capacity or the high limits are available, um, you know, for product liability, um, that's a gap we see pretty often as well. And what's great is we have, you know, mar markets, especially in you know, Lee's territory that, you know, have, have a regional approach and can offer some of the forms and coverages that are different in, in particular regions. Um, I know the attestation form in Michigan is a, a big one, Lee. Yeah, the attestation forms here in Michigan, um, you know, I, I think a lot of the retail agents and, and the insureds look at that um, a little bit differently than how, how I look at it. I almost look at it as just a requirement that they need to satisfy to get their license. Um, I personally don't look at it as any sort of uh, comprehensive coverage that would protect their business. Um, I look at that as really just, it's a requirement they have to check off to get their license. And then there's another policy that is totally separate from that, that is really gonna provide the protection that that business needs. And that would be, you know, through a, a traditional GL product liability policy that we can place. Um, and we can get up to primary limits up to $10 million in some cases. And we can build excess on top of that for the larger operations.